Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about protein and why protein is such an integral component of your health and uh, weight loss and even muscle gaining uh, nutrition routines. But before we start, I just want to remind you that if you want to uh, see more videos about health and wellness and uh, different kinds of life coaching, go ahead and click on the subscription button below. And um, in order to be notified of new videos that come out, go ahead and click on the notification bell. So let's talk about protein. Um, where do proteins come from? Well, we have vegetarian proteins and we have animal proteins. Uh, but the thing about the animal proteins that's so unique, um, the ones that come from things like eggs, seafood, meat, chicken, is that uh, animal protein provides all nine essential amino acids. And why do we call these essential amino acids? Because um, our body is very intelligent and it can often make the things it needs even from matter that's different from what it needs. But in the case of the essential amino acids, this is one type of nutrition that it actually has, it has to get externally, it has to eat. Um, so you have to eat these things and uh, most of them can only be found in animal proteins. And so uh, that's why oftentimes uh, people that are eating vegan need to supplement more. Uh, there is one form of vegetarian protein uh, that can meet most of these amino acids and that is soy or tofu. Um, obviously if you're eating soy or tofu, really try and go with the organic uh, because of uh, just all the bioengineering and chemicals and, and GMO, etc. Um, another reason protein is so important to the body is because most of our cells and the structure of our cells are made up of protein. And so our body needs protein to build and repair tissue so um, you know if you've got any kind of injury if you're working out if you're trying to build muscle if you're trying to lose weight so you want to um, you know go from more fat to muscle you're going to need protein in order to have the proper nutrition to nourish um, your body uh, another reason that protein is so important is because um, you know, high fat and high carb um, combinations can create fat storage. So if you're having more protein in your diet, your fats and your carbs are gonna be reduced and um, you're gonna be eating a nutrient uh, that is not gonna affect uh, fat storage as much. Now, how much should you have? There are figures that vary widely depending on the body that you're looking at, whether that's the World Health Organization or, um, whether you're looking at low carbers, whether you're looking at vegan doctors, but on average, um, we're talking anywhere from 0.36 grams per pound all the way to 1.2, um, you know, gram per pound. Now, an easy way that I like to think about this is every time you eat, you want to have protein. Protein is an integral component of your meal. Um, it will keep your blood sugar more stable. It will keep you more satiated. It will satisfy hunger much more than, let's say, if you had a purely carb meal, um, like for instance, a pasta with tomato sauce may fill you on the spot, but you'll get hungry soon after because of um, the, the blood sugar spikes that will come out of it. So um, if you have ever heard of the My Plate, which is the USDA's nutritional guidelines, they, you know, it used to be the food pyramid and now they transitioned into a plate to make it easier for people to understand basic nutritional guidelines. But you will see um, what's interesting about my plate and the USDA guidelines is there's so many special interests to influence the final outcome of the my plate. And so most of the time there's going to be an encouragement to have all of your major macronutrients in there, which is carbs, fat, and protein. But you'll see that in every meal they recommend that about a quarter of your plate or more or let's say about a palm's worth of your plate is always going to be your protein component. And let's be honest, most of us don't naturally gravitate towards eating protein at every meal. Um, you know, maybe one meal a day, maybe two, but if you're eating three meals a day, I highly doubt that every one of your meals 
has a, um, you know, a, a, a strong protein component. And so I really want to encourage you to start um, incorporating that. And one of the reasons that we're not necessarily drawn to protein, but we're drawn to other things is because other things might, you know, be more sexy, might be tastier. Think about it. You know, a fluffy piece of bread, uh, creamy pasta, uh, cakes, those are all more appealing um, than having steak all day. Even though, you know, maybe you are a steak eater and love steak or love bacon, you know, once you've had it once, you kind of don't really crave it again during the, the day. And that's exactly the point. Protein is hitting your, um, your, your necessary nutrients, and that's why it's quenching your hunger. Whereas things like high carb foods um, are not going to do that. And so what's going to happen is if you're not getting enough protein, you're going to be hungry more often and you're going to be eating more because your foods are nutritionally low. You're not hitting your protein needs. And so you're finding yourself eating more and more because your body is trying to meet its needs. Um, something else that's really important about, you know, basic protein is that it is uh, lower in calories than fat. Um, and so you have to realize that fat is the highest density uh, caloric food. And so um, if you're eating protein, you're going to be satisfying yourself with foods uh, with less, uh, with a, a smaller amount of calories needed to satisfy yourself than if you're using fats. And if you're doing it with carbs, then you're spiking your blood sugar too much. So again, the proteins are very, very essential to this. Um, as I mentioned earlier, satiation, so important. So how many grams are we talking in a day? Well, the average American eats about 70 grams of uh, protein in a day, which is, this is if a, a person is eating a good amount of protein. That means that they're probably eating two meals with a complete amount of protein to hit 70. But many people are eating less than that. And so they're not even meeting their basic needs to be able to replenish all their cellular processes. Um, so what are some signs of protein defic deficiency to kind of get other symptoms or a ways to know if you're not getting enough protein? Well, edema, if you are having any kind of body swelling, it could be a sign that you're lacking in protein. Hunger, if you find that you get hangry or that you get hungry soon after eating a meal, uh, chances are there wasn't any protein or wasn't enough protein in your meal. You'll often hear nutritionists telling you that when you snack, make sure there's protein as part of your snack so that you're actually satisfied. So again, really getting protein is a component of anything you eat. Um, your hair, is your hair very dry? Are you losing hair? Um, are your na nails very brittle? Um, are they breaking easily? Are they not growing the way they used to? Uh, do you have skin problems? Um, you know, dryness, irritations, um, maybe even you're breaking out because you're eating too many carbs and you're not eating um, enough protein. Are you feeling weak? Uh, this is going to be a big one, especially if you're somebody that works out a lot. You need protein in order to build muscle. Um, I'm sure that you've all seen or heard of the weightlifters that are drinking protein shakes, etc. The reason they're doing this is because it is a known fact that in order to build your muscle, you need more protein. And what are some signs of having too much protein, just so you can start getting a feel, uh, because I know some of you do worry about getting too much protein, although most likely you're not getting too much protein. Unless you're a person that is just crazy on protein and you're eating three meals a day and two snacks and they're all protein and you're having a lot of um, processed types of protein, like protein powders, uh, like high protein, um, you know, processed yogurts, or uh, you're eating, you know, a steak several times a day, most likely you are not getting too much protein. But some of the signs would be indigestion, um, nausea, dehydration, constipation, sometimes diarrhea also can be, um, you know, just stomach pains or gas. These could all be signs of too much protein. So now I'm curious from you, uh, have you tried or played with your protein macro before? 
do you try and have protein at every meal? Um, please go ahead and share in the comment section below what you've noticed about when you add more protein to your diet or take it out. Um, if you're a vegetarian, what kind of you know vegetarian protein sources are you using in order to be satiated? Are you using beans? Are you using nuts? Are you using uh, organic soys? Uh, go ahead and let us know in the comments section below. Again, I want to remind you um, that if you like this type of content or if you have any other type of content that you're interested in and want to you know, shoot me uh, a message or comment on a video, go ahead and subscribe uh, by clicking on the subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be notified every time there's a new video. Wishing you many blessings. Thank you.